Well, a very good afternoon to you. Thanks for clicking on to Sunday's edition of the Long Range Discussion for the 15th of January. And the battle continues with the models and, of course, uh, the arguments back and forth uh, between whether it's going to be cold uh, or, or warm. And uh, I think probably one of the most frustrating things for myself is, if I'm being honest, is the this... Uh, fact that you know it's unbelievable the amount of people who have been hyped up this winter i don't know if it's i do actually think it is probably to do with the past couple of winters of colder and snowier weather that we have seen you know a lot of people have come out of the woodwork so to speak and uh, uh, gotten a an interest in the weather and heck there's nothing wrong with that you know i encourage that it's great to see but there's a lot of learning uh, you know uh, with myself but uh, as well as that with many people who seem to uh, you know grasp uh, you know the the raw model the, the the model run that's in front of them and they can understand that and then uh, with each new model run coming out they basically buy into this concept uh, you know with each model the model is a mathematical uh, you know it's a bunch of equations man-made to um, for the atmosphere or uh, the model to try and understand what the atmosphere is doing it's, it's taking into account what's happening at the moment and trying to make a, a forecast as to what's going to happen you know one two three as much as up to ten days in advance and the problem with this model folks is it is seeing the eastern europe uh, cold there's no doubt about that it's never drifted away from that therefore you know it would be crazy to not be pretty much 100 percent certain the cold is in fact already over eastern europe the problem is with this folks is this part from about here if i if i put my pencil over europe from where my pencil is aligned it's certain that there's going to be cold from this side but the problem is from here westwards this here folks is the largest area where change is going to be taking place it's going to be the most dramatic change within the atmosphere in this region here yes Rory O'Gorman, uh, one of my uh, Facebook readers has been pretty correct in the sense that the Azores high has been very dominant he believes it will remain dominant and I can understand where he's coming from. Rory's a, a pretty, uh, you know, he, he knows his stuff. He knows how to read the pattern. I personally, I slightly disagree with him in the sense that um, I do uh, continue to see the cold coming. But there's nothing wrong with that. I, I encourage uh, your opinion, your comments. That's what it's all about, folks. And uh, But the battle continues. What annoys me, like I say, is this business of jumping on each model run. I've continuously said, and I've been trying to drum it into you, to um, look for trends within a model. Understanding the pattern. Trying to understand what's happened uh, before, what's happening currently, in order to make a forecast for what's going to happen down the road. And there is going to be big changes going on in western parts of Europe. It's been milder. Uh, we've got high pressure and control at the moment. That ridge of high pressure is reasonably strong, pumping the trough that's over the eastern part of Europe. This ridge, folks, pumping, uh, you know, relatively milder air. Although we don't feel that here in the UK because basically it feels quite nippy out there. The reason being is it's a stagnant high that's trapped the cold air underneath it. And even tonight and the next couple of nights, we're going to be seeing clear skies, light winds, and because of that cold air in place trapped underneath this ridge, we are going to see a widespread frost. There is going to be areas that are cloudier, don't see that frost as much, but certainly where the, the clear skies are, the light winds, rural, rural areas are dipping to typical cold levels with this given pattern. Like I said before, it's nothing arctic. It's nothing particularly cold in the sense of, you know, uh, anything se severe, anything. It's, it's your classic cold, really. But like I said to you, the model is struggling to grasp more this part because the biggest changes are taking place over this, this region. Highs across many central and eastern parts of Europe will struggle into the minus four, even minus six Celsius range for the first part of the, the, the upcoming week. But let's skip ahead. This model, I believe, has been re 
uh, you know, uh, a new run has been created. And you notice that the cold continuously, it's a broken record. The cold is blossoming over the eastern part of the continent. By Wednesday, we're looking at a trough that's trying to dig into the western part of Europe uh, over the, the UK. There's going to be a system. This is for Wednesday, folks. But by Thursday, there's going to be a system that treks along this boundary, this jet stream here. Notice how it splits. There's a piece of it goes southwards into southern Europe. And, of course, that's energising very unsettled weather here across uh, the Mediterranean Sea. Even heavy snow. We've seen snow down in, in Egypt. That should not be a surprise, folks, given the fact that we've got this dislodge of very, very cold air getting all the way down to Africa. No surprise there's snow if you've got an area of low pressure that's tapping into this reservoir of cold. But over the course of Thursday, we're going to be seeing a system pushing through and then by uh, by Wednesday into Thursday, you notice here that the cold air is starting to drag into the northern half of the UK. Cold trough still over eastern parts of Europe. By Friday, you notice that the colder air is surging more intensely out of the northwest, covering all of Europe, folks. Or sorry, all of the UK and Ireland. That is a cold flow. Don't underestimate just because you don't have blues over you that that isn't a, a darn cold flow out of the northwest conducive for sure to produce snowfall you notice like i said in yesterday's video as this trough digs in raises heights over the eastern and southeastern part of europe therefore pushes that core of coldest air back northwest up into scandinavia and what we need to watch out for, and I believe this could happen, of course you've got uh, embedded areas of low pressure in this trough here. So those areas of low pressure are maybe going to stop the, the, the transfer of this Arctic air south into the UK. But let's skip to Saturday. And you notice here, folks, that the area of low pressure becomes one. It goes further into towards uh, southern Scandinavia. What does that mean? It might mean that we could get tapped into this very, very cold air over northern Scandinavia. Highs below minus 10, lows into the minus 20s. That there, folks, would suggest a flow down into the UK and Ireland. Yes, it's showing paler colours would indicate that we have got mild air. However, look at the flow. Look at where it's coming from. It's coming from the northwest. Folks, it is not seeing the low-level cold air in this mild run. Like I said to you, it's not grasping this because there is no physical evidence to suggest that this is going to take place. But the model was warmer this morning. It's back to colder again. It's ba bouncing back and forth. It's going to do that a hundred times before the end of the week's out. So please do not jump onto each mild run. I'm sick and tired of hearing people one minute saying it's going to be cold, getting excited the next minute. They're crying because it's not going to happen. Folks, read the pattern. Understand and listen to what I'm saying. And you can see here by Sunday, you can see that cold air trying to push back in again. Scandinavia, you notice it remains cold. By Monday here, you notice it's colder again. So the, it's all over the place. I do believe that we're going to see the change to transfer the cold here. As that trough digs in, it's going to lift that Arctic air back up into Scandinavia. And as it does so, then we watch out for that cold. At least parts of that cold. Not the vortex, it's, vortex itself, but certainly pieces of that cold with embedded fronts will push into the UK and Ireland. I still believe by middle of the next weekend, I think highs across many parts of the UK and even interior Ireland will struggle to hit freezing. No reason to change. No reason to get downhearted, folks. I still believe this is on the table. Hope you have a great day, folks. Bye for now.